Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are talking about the Game Park Holdings GP2X. Um, it's a handheld that's got quite a lot of meaning to me because um, I did a bit of work uh, on software on the day on it. Uh, but let's get into the history a little bit first before we uh, we do anything else. So uh, November 10th, 2005, uh, a small South Korean electronics firm called Game Park Holdings released a handheld device. And uh, the GP2X, it was a Linux-based device. Uh, Linux, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, it was designed from the outset to be open source and uh, easy to develop for. In the sense that the tool chains would be there and they wouldn't cost any money to actually uh, use. Uh, now, this wasn't uh, the GP2X wasn't the first machine to be like this. In fact, uh, it had a spiritual predecessor, the GP32. And that was a quite similar in uh, in its scope and what it did. Uh, the problem was the company that uh, made that, which was uh, Game Park, which they released it in 2001. They, after releasing it, had uh, a lot of uh, a disagreement inside the company how they were going to proceed after that and how they were going to deal with the actual machine and what to do next. And so the company basically split into two with uh, Game Park going on and trying to create a, a big all single dancing 3D handheld that would compete with the PSP and massively failing. And Game Park Holdings going on and creating the GP2X, which is what they decided was uh, an iterative improvement on the GP32. And by all accounts, Game Park Holdings seemed to have made the right decision because they lasted quite a bit longer. They released the GP2X, lasted for quite a while, and was followed up by uh, the F200 model, which had a touchscreen, and also the Wiz and Canoe, which were improvements and redesigns. After the Canoe, Game Park Holdings stopped making hardware and moved into making software instead. But uh, the machine itself is kind of interesting um, because it was that open source stuff, and it, it, it obviously became the, the home to quite a lot of emulators and it was able it's quite a capable machine they would emulate quite a lot of stuff even uh to a to a degree <laughs> there were playstation emulators which kind of worked um i ported across a uh, virtual jaguar to it although um <laughs> only tended to run things at four frames per second but uh it did actually run it and other machines normal let's say normal machines like Super Nintendo and stuff, were capable of running at a, a decent rate. Uh, it's also home to quite a few games as well. Uh, some specially created games are available for it. Uh, also some ported games. Again, I ported um, Aleph 1 across, which is the open source version of Marathon. If you don't know Marathon, it was uh, effectively the, uh, again, spiritual predecessor of Halo. Uh, Bungie Studios' big games that uh, eventually led up to them being purchased by Microsoft and uh, and creating the Halo franchise. Well, they'd already started creating the Halo franchise. That's a whole big thing. But anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's what led to Halo. Um, yeah, so uh, it's an interesting machine, uh, and I want to take a look at it again, because it means quite a lot to me. I've tried really hard to get enough one of these for quite a long time. Um, I got rid of mine when I stopped uh, developing stuff for it back in the day. Um uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's a struggle to get them. The prices have uh, are quite high for them, weirdly enough, especially for working ones, because they do have a few issues, but we'll get into that in a second. Anyway, let's take a look at the unit. And here it is. This is the uh, GP2X. It's still, I think, a nice-looking little device. Uh, yeah, very simple, really, just a, kind of a, almost a... Game Boy Advance looking machine, but yeah, I think it looks really nice. Uh, it's got a 3.5 inch screen. Um, the later versions that came with a touch screen. Uh, yeah, obviously a little thumbstick here, which also got a button underneath it. Yeah, some face buttons, uh, start select, volume rockers, and also a couple of triggers. All of those can be addressed in software. Uh, separate button, so you can use the volume. Are you? For instance, use the volume as uh, extra buttons for swapping weapons and such in LF1. Uh, down the bottom here, we've got a power light, which comes on really enough when it's on. <laughs> a nice Game Park Holdings label and a battery uh, charge indicator. On the side, we have ports for DC and also for a uh, USB, so you can transfer files to it. Uh, an external port on the back where you can connect uh, a couple of things, actually, including TV out. 
uh, a power switch on the side, and at the top we have a 3.5mm headphone jack and an SD card. So uh, yeah, it's a nice little machine. Well, let's turn it on and we'll get a uh, we'll be quiet for the uh, start up riff. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's very simple. <laughs> it takes a little while to boot. Again, this is running a Linux uh, on chip system, so it does have to do a little bit of booting. And there we go, the GP2X menu. It can, other than games, also play video. It's got an ebook reader, um, various other things, pictures and stuff. Uh, again, it's uh, later versions included cameras and what have you. Uh, and it's technically feasible to connect the camera to this although i've never personally done it um yeah so th these are all obvious ones mp3 players so yeah photos you got a few settings you can do in there including stuff to control the uh, external tv hookups some utilities which help you with uh, files and stuff uh yeah ebook reader and a file explorer if we go into game which we do by using the thumbstick button you get options to load from, you can have stuff internally in NAND, you can have stuff coming off external storage, because you can have, uh, yeah, so you can load stuff from storage. We are going to go obviously into the SD storage, and what we'll do is we'll just choose a game. So it's quite hard to see the screen from up here. <laughs> uh, and a couple of the things that, that happen with this is they got uh, some kind of recreated games. So if we go to, uh, well here, there's a good one, Night Law. If you remember Night Law on the Sinclair Spectrum and other open machines, well, this is a recreated version of it. So uh, let's zoom into this. There you go. Uh, it's slightly changed because you don't rotate. You you actually move in the, in the right direction now. But it's uh, it looks fairly faithful. Just uh, just a lot nicer. <laughs> but it's uh, it basically works the same way. So uh, if we jump on one of these spikes here, oh, I missed the spike. That's amazing. There we go. <laughs> so as you can see, it does basically work the same way as it used to. So, so it's a really nice little ported game. Right, if we get out of there now and move to something else. So there you go. If you uh, remember Chucky Egg, again, on several different 8-bit platforms and actually a couple of 16-bit ones too, this is a pretty good port of it. In my defense, I'm upside down and the GP2X uh, joystick isn't the greatest in the world. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's part of that. What we'll try and do is we'll try to get some video from the uh, TV out. Uh, it's going to be odds on whether that works or not, but we'll give it a try. Now, the ideal thing to do here would be to connect this up using the TV output. Something I can certainly, you know, I have the hardware to do because this here is the official breakout board. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the one thing that this official breakout board is supposed to have uh, right here is an S-Video port, uh, which I have plainly taken off and used for another project. Yeah, so I'll be getting one of those again and, uh, and, and replacing that port, but it does mean that we can't, <laughs> at this time, actually do uh, any TV out. So we are going to have to use the slightly less than ideal recording from the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it won't be too bad, right? We'll zoom in. Right, so the first one is Aleph 1, which is, as I, I think I said earlier, the open source version of Marathon, which was Bungie's prequel to the Halo series, or the spiritual prequel. prequel. So uh, yeah, we can go ahead and start a new game. And it's got most of the music and the cut screens and stuff in there. It's, uh, it's a, if I say so myself, a pretty good port. <laughs> it was missing a couple of key maps at the time, uh, which I didn't know because I didn't play a lot of the levels and the resolution. So here we go. We start uh, 
on the screen and we can we basically it, it emulates dual sticks so we've got oh, Yeah, so we've got uh, the actual thumbstick controls our look and the buttons control our movement. So we can go here and we can open up this door. And, and yeah, it works fairly well. We can sidestep and what have you. If we look here, we can touch panels and it also did a did some relatively clever stuff like switching resolutions because if we go over here and through a second door over here and uh, one of the things is uh, with marathons you have all these computer screens and you get into them now these computer screens have a lot of text so basically we had to change the resolution on the fly so that these were actually readable so it worked pretty well uh, it works it's nice and fast it's definitely playable and it plays most of Marathon's maps and Marathon 2. This is in fact a Marathon 2 map. So uh, yeah, if I say so myself, a, a pretty good port and certainly a fun game. Right, let's move on to something different. And finally, here we have an example of the Mega Drive and we're playing uh, Streets of Rage. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> let's just, oh, no, that was the wrong button. Let's try that button. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it plays pretty much uh, as well as uh, Omega Drive does. There's a little touch of slowdown here and there, but nothing serious. Considering the age of this machine, oops, that was entirely the wrong button I just pressed there. I've, I've done the perennial accident of using up my special before anyone was on the screen. <laughs> In my defense, I am playing this upside down and through a, uh, a TV view screen, so uh, yeah. But there you go, it's the GP2X. It was a wonderful little device when it came out. Uh, I think it's still good now. It looks the part. Uh, it, let's just turn down there. <laughs> it looks the part. It still runs really well. Uh, there's still, the software is all still available for it, although getting the build tool chains to work, it takes a little bit more. Um, effort, but uh, you can do it, and um, yeah, there's some some wonderful stuff. Uh, yeah, if I just promote myself, a lot of my stuff's out there. <laughs> my television emulator, the first version of Joel, a game which I recently released for the Atari 2600. Not a stellar game, but it's, I think it's fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> the Virtual Jaguar. If you want to try that out, uh, but Aleph One, which I think is probably my my crowning achievement and all this stuff. Uh, that is available out there and I think is definitely worth playing because it's a very, very good first-person shooter. Right. I love this little handheld. I really do. I'm really glad I got another one. Um, the prices are getting ridiculous, but if you can get one, it's definitely worthwhile. And obviously there are the slightly newer ones, the Wiz and the Canoe and the F200 as well. Uh, all of them are basically intercompatible effectively, so uh, any of them should work. But yeah, it's a wonderful little device uh, and I genuinely do love it. Right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video, then please say something in the comments below. Uh, and we're also uh, doing Twitch as well, obviously. Uh, so twitch.tv slash reinfuse so definitely join us there we our schedule's a bit up in the air at the moment but generally it's gonna it's usually a wednesday uh a friday saturday or a sunday and uh, we will absolutely tell us tell everyone on our twitter feed when we're going to be on right see you next time